We are in the middle of our discussion on the banquet scene from Macbeth. In the last video, we stopped at line 109, where Lady Macbeth criticized Macbeth for having spoiled the merriment, the enjoyment of the banquet through his um, strange behavior. And now Macbeth, who is uh, unaware of the fact that uh, nobody except him could uh, see the ghost of Banco, says, Can such things be and overcome us like a summer's cloud without our special wonder? Macbeth says, Is it possible that such a strange incident would take place without disturbing us, without destabilizing our mental calm? Can such strange, unearthly, awkward things happen which seem to cast a spell of fear on us like a dense and dark piece of cloud on the summer sky which, which darkens the sky and which hides the light of day. Such strange odd supernatural occurrences should also cast such a spell of fear on our minds and we are not supposed to behave normally when we are under that spell of fear. Then he says to Lady Macbeth, you make me strange even to the disposition that I owe. When now I think you can behold such sights and keep the natural ruby of your cheeks, when mine is blanched with fear. Now Macbeth uh, thinks that Lady Macbeth too must have seen the ghost of Banco, but he says that you make me feel strange, you amaze me, you bewilder me by your, uh, by your uh, normalcy, because even after having noticed such a fearful incident when your mind is bleached with fear when your mind is pale with fear you can easily keep the natural color of your cheeks you do not show the expression of fear on your facial expression and that is what makes me feel strange that is what bewilders me against my habitual nature. Now Ross, who uh, senses something suspicious in Macbeth's speech, in Macbeth's reply to Lady Macbeth, asks, what sights, my lord? What, what are the sights that you were uh, talking about? We didn't see anything odd. Now Lady Macbeth uh, tries to pacify Ross and the other courtiers, saying that you should not pay any attention to what Macbeth is saying. Lady Macbeth says, I pray you, speak not. I request you, do not speak to Macbeth at the present moment. He grows worse and worse. The more you will talk to him, the more agitated will he become. The worse will be his temperament. Question enrages him. At once, good night. Stand not upon the order of your going, but go at once. Now Lady Macbeth uh, uh, very categorically tells the courtiers to leave the banquet hall because she, being a very intelligent woman, senses that if the guests stay any longer, Macbeth's guilt, Macbeth's... Uh, involvement in crimes might be exposed to the company. So she requests the guests to leave as soon as they can. And she says that you need not maintain any courtly decorum while leaving the banquet hall, but you all should disperse at once. Then Lennox bids good night. He says, good night and better health, attend his majesty. 
to Lady Macbeth, a kind good night to all. Then excellent all but Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. So Macbeth and Lady Macbeth are left uh, on the stage while all the other courtiers and attendants leave. Macbeth, uh, rather in the form of a soliloquy, says, it is not exactly addressed to his wife. It is his, um, his pondering which he expresses through his speech. He says, it will have blood. They say blood will have blood. So it uh, refers to his bloody crimes, both the murder of King Duncan and the murder of Banco. And he says that such bloody crimes will have bloody consequences. They say, people say, it is a proverb that blood will have blood. If you commit a murder, you will also invite further murders in return. Stones have been known to move and trees to speak. Uh, according to the popular superstitions of the English people at that time, uh, stones and trees were regarded to bear ominous signs. They were supposed to to convey strange supernatural messages. Augurs and understood relations have by maggot pies and calves and rooks brought forth the secretest man of blood. So people's secrets have always been revealed by ominous signs, by ominous predictions. Augurs are predictions through omens, through signs and understood relations, secret relations, have by different ominous birds, maggot pies or magpies, and shafts or calves and rooks, both are ominous birds, like jackdaws and uh, rooks. Such, such ominous birds have always brought forth um, secret messages, secret predictions about the wrongdoings by people. Then, in the last part of his speech, he addresses his wife and asks her what time of night it was. What is the night? Lady Macbeth replies, almost at odds with morning which is which so it is difficult to say definitely what time it exactly is it is at odds with morning that means uh, it is almost near dawn that it cannot be categorically said whether it is night or whether it is day Then suddenly there is a shift, there is a sudden change in Macbeth's tone as well as the subject matter of his speech. Uh, till now he was pondering on his uh, having seen the ghost of Banco and the possible bloody consequences of his previous crimes, but now suddenly he becomes quite pragmatic and very realistic and he asks his wife how sayest thou that Macduff denies his person at our great bidding so amid all this chaos in the banquet Macbeth did not completely lose his rationality completely did not uh, lose his uh, power of observation and he did notice that Macduff was absent in spite of his invitation uh, to attend the banquet. Lady Macbeth says, did you send to him, sir? Lady Macbeth asks, did you invite him, sir? Macbeth, I hear it by the way, but I will send. Uh, Macbeth says that I cannot yet remember whether I specifically 
invited him but i should have and i will get to know it soon i will send i will send a messenger to confirm the news whether he was sent for whether he was invited or not then he says there's not a one of them but in his house i keep a servant feed so now we get to know how shrewd how intelligent and clever uh, ruler macbeth is he had sorry he has um, bribed he has paid agents or servants in the houses of all the courtiers of all the lords in his country in everyone's house he has a servant paid he has a special agent bribed to convey to him the secret news from the houses of the courtiers i will tomorrow and betimes i will to the weird sisters so tomorrow i will get to know the whereabouts of macduff and in the meantime i shall visit i shall meet the weird sisters the witches more shall they speak they will speak more about my destiny i will have to know further about my destiny from the weird sisters for now i am bent to know by the worst means the worst now macbeth being a very intelligent and shrewd person knows that uh, the worst awaits him that his destiny cannot avoid the worst consequences of his crimes but he is bent on knowing he is very much desirous to know what that worst consequences are and he would not refrain from resorting to the worst means the worst means here signifies the supernatural means the aids of the witches for my own good all causes shall give way for my own purpose for my own good all causes shall give way all causes all means shall have to be utilized for my own sake i am in blood stepped in so far that should i wait no more returning were as tedious as go over no macbeth is fully aware of his uh, criminality he says that i have come so far through blood i have come so far by killing people and if i wait no more if i do not wait further through blood my journey to my former self to my former innocent self to my former status as a servant of the king would be very much tedious and fruitless as i have come so far through crimes through murders i should continue committing crimes and murders to move forward the returning is now impracticable i cannot return back to my former self to my former status strange things i have in head that will to hand which must be acted ere they may be scanned so macbeth says that i have strange plans i have secret plans in my head which will have to be executed through my hands i have secret plans in my head but i will have to implement those plans in reality and those plans will have to be implemented before people get enough time to scan them people get enough time to suspect them people get enough time to restrain me from implementing those plans that is what he means to say here then lady macbeth says you lack the season of all natures sleep now, lady macbeth uh, 
realizes that her husband is uh, lacking mental tranquility. He is devoid of sleep and he needs rest. And Macbeth also acknowledges that both of them need rest. So he says, come, we'll to sleep. My strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. We are yet but young indeed. So these lines uh, very significantly reveal Macbeth's very astute self-realization. He knows that as criminals, as criminals they are yet young, they are yet immature, they are not yet mature enough to, um, to keep their mental calm in spite of all the illicit, immoral and vicious things that they have been doing all the while. So he says, my strange and self-abuse is the initiate fear that wants hard use. Uh, he has a strange and um, he has a strange and criminal nature which is um, which is the cause of his fear. It is his own nature, it is, it is his own criminal nature which is the progenitor of his fear and it lacks hard use. His criminality is something which is yet to be seasoned, which is yet to be matured, which is yet to be uh, accomplished through practice. And that is why he says that we are yet but young indeed. We are still young, we are still immature and inexperienced in our deeds of criminality. So here is the end of the banquet scene. If you have your queries and your own opinions, your own views, you are free to express them in the comment section. Thank you.